I was taught from a young age that the glory of battle does not save a civilization. Though we must fight to defend our lands, the will of the court and the laws that we write to uphold our humanity will be the foundation for our prosperity. Shubbiluliuma, the king who could not catch a break. We've had an influx of invaders the last few turns of our campaign, raiding our lands and sacking our outposts. After dealing with a rather large first wave, we've now got a remaining reinforcement to wipe out. Fifty-five turns in and we've built up a formidable army. Our spearmen take the front lines while our other infantry deal with flanking attacks. Kua is safe for now, but there's no time for Shupi Luliuma to recover in the settlement, for a rebellion threatens us in Zipalanda. Over the course of the campaign, we've specced Shupi heavily into replenishment-based skills, which has proven incredibly useful in defending Hattusa. As an added bonus, we've been employing our unique faction command, which is a feature available to all playable factions. In Shupi Uliuma's case, when his faction command is used, it increases our replenishment even further. You see, Shippy ensures his army has the very best health insurance benefits. If it's not used by Shemsu Hall, we receive an increase in workforce until it's used again. Beginning at Hattusa, we started our campaign with enemies on all sides. We built tools to set up our income and food resources, using diplomacy with our friendlier neighbours to support that. We then set out to claim a few extra provinces such as Zipalanda and Melidia for more resource production and to increase our legitimacy. These were owned by smaller, less trustworthy factions, so it wasn't a huge risk. Our first major war began around turn 22 with Ascay and Frigia from West Hattie. They saw us in action and eventually pleaded for a peace treaty, just in time for Corinta to rear his ugly antlers. He's moved up north, taking out Purushanda and bordering us. This was a benefit to us, really, as our first goal of the campaign was to gain more legitimacy, and owning their sacred Haiti lands would increase that significantly. But you're king already, you might say. Haven't you enough legitimacy? Well, my poor frontline. If we can hit our goal of 200 legitimacy, we can unlock our special royal powers, buffs and abilities available to us to solidify our position as king. We'll need all the tricks we can fill up our sleeve if the world turns to a state of collapse. You may also notice my hefty supply of resources. This is no accident, as I've essentially become a doomsday prepper, hoarding my resources for the coming apocalypse. So, we've reached turn 55, and we've reached a bit of a stalemate. Our hand has been forced, however, as invading armies and rebellions have been taking advantage of our distraction, raiding, sacking, and being a general nuisance in our homelands. But with an incoming wave of invading Shekeleshians, we must take Shupi up north to protect Hadusa. Our next target raised the lands of Zipalanda. But before we head into this battle, we want to take advantage of our position as High King, recruiting from the pool of royal units. Let's grab some royal chariots, my favourite. Shupi Luliumo is the High King of Hatti, and so he sits at the highest position of the court. This gives us special elite recruitment, as we've seen, but it also means we have a fair advantage over the other members of the court. 
It would be a waste not to interfere with it. As our goal right now is to reach 200 legitimacy, the court position of lawgiver looks mighty appealing with its plus 14 legitimacy. If we can steal that seat for our own general, then we'd be much closer to our goal, not to mention remove some of Corinthus buffs. A quick threaten plot will hopefully shove them out. We'll have to wait until the end of harvest season, Shemsu Hall, before we find out. It's three turns until then, so we've got a couple more actions per turn we can take. Plenty more opportunity to meddle and increase that chance of success. We can also see our previous plots made this year. All of these will be resolved and reset on Shemsu Hall. I'm feeling cheeky though, and I want an extra turn in the court. Back near the beginning of our campaign, I chose to lead Supi down the ancient legacy path of Mawatali the Benevolent. Keeping my vassals and general populace happy earns us gratitude, and with that, tokens of gratitude. We've got a mixture here of instant construction, character ancillaries, informants, extra court actions, and extra battle proficiencies court actions. That's what I'm after. Let's give myself two of these. I don't want to spend all my tokens at once. Back in the court, we can now spend the regard that Corinda has for us on increasing our plot's level. 89% is a much healthier chance of success. That'll put Corinda back on the shelf. In our capital of Atusa, we've completed construction of the Temple for Arena, boosting our favour with the Goddess into Tier 2. We'll take this opportunity to devote Shupi himself to her divinity, providing extra armour, a charge bonus, and less upkeep. I also plan, once I've unlocked a second slot, to begin worship of Corinta, Corinta the deity, not my enemy with the antlers. Many of his effects benefit our movement range on the campaign map, and with constant threat of invaders, being able to quickly scoot around the map is a blessing. Talking of invaders, let's take out these fellows. It is Shemsu Hall, the day the king surveys the land and the day our decisions in the court are acted on. With successes across the board, we can now take Corinthus' old position for our own general. We're still a little way off from 200 legitimacy, so we'll need to recover some more lands to gain that the old fashioned way. And we're also gonna build more monuments to convince everyone I'm important. After dealing with the most recent invasion, Shubi Luliuma is free to head back down south to finish up the war against Kanesh. They've been a fawn in our side and a distraction from Corinta. Time to take them out. Ganesh hold on to their settlement with... Wait, who's that? Oh no, it's the outpost reinforcements. I completely forgot about them. Uh, they have chariots. Um, spearmen, you go after the chariots. Everyone turn around. Uh, my chariots can sweep behind and take out the enemy slingers. Everyone move. I'm not panicking, you're panicking. Everyone seems to be making a dash for the settlement, so I'm gonna try and cut them off with my spears. The chariots have already gone through, so let's bring these boys back in to help with the infantry. I can't claim these to be my finest tactics due to my panic, but they seem to have worked. Okay, let's get everyone ready to attack the settlement. We're attacking from two entrances to spread their forces out. It looks like a storm's coming. That'll hinder my ranged units for sure. Their sense should be round behind these units to flank them. After taking Kanesha's settlement of Sericha, we have finally hit our goal of 200 legitimacy. In the power of the crown window, we can select our new royal powers. Tier 1 of Forced Annexation provides us with the ability to annex a faction if they only have one region. 
I'm liking the potential for this, especially once I build up to tier 2. My next power will be Court Presence, allowing us to hold an extra court position, because a court full of me also feels appealing. The faction of Kanesh remains with one more settlement, and a hefty army sat inside it. Good thing we unlocked my royal powers. Let's just go into diplomacy, do a little annexing here, and voila! Kanesh are no more. Feels so good to be king. During our time defending Hattie, the world has slipped slowly down past a state of crisis and into collapse. While our enemies enjoy additional buffs in this chaotic time, we suffer from minus 20% morale and minus 15% replenishment. Good thing we buffed our replenishment earlier, eh? We also suffer from a 30% chance that a natural disaster will hit our lands, the effects of which are yet to be seen. We do, however, gain 20% resources from raising, which definitely won't help the state of the world as we snowball down into oblivion and witness the end of our civilization, but it might mean we can afford a fancy new monument. Or praise should be. Using my royal powers to annex a region has given me a little taste for power. Hitting that next tier could be exciting. Maybe we could annex Karunta. We just got to get him down to two regions. It's only another 100 legitimacy. Okay, okay, my, my annexing ability takes 12 turns to cool down. Within that amount of time, I could possibly hit 300 legitimacy. And since Shemsu Hor arrives every six turns, that gives me at least two rotations of court action. Discrediting other positions will gain us legitimacy, as well as embezzling and other court actions. And since our royal powers gave us the chance to hold two court positions, let's hire a new general. We can send him down south to make contact with factions in Egypt along the Nile, improving our trade for food. We'll also build on our legitimacy through buildings, outposts, taking out the next wave of invaders coming our way. In a world of collapse, the skies are dark and the lands feel gloomy. And you know what? I'm feeling extra doomsday -y. So I'm heading into photo mode to really hammer home the end times. Gritty realism, please. And let's keep that on for battles. Beautiful. I guess there's sea people in Egypt as well. Let's, uh, let's head back. Doo -doo -doo. The gods are upset. I've been too aggressive. They shake our lands to warn us of their fury, and we must rebuild and beg for forgiveness. Meanwhile, we've almost achieved 300 legitimacy. Just gonna buy this. We're heading in towards La Rwanda, one of Corinta's main settlements. I'll need a couple turns to set up sieging equipment, so it's very likely the man himself will come down and join the battle. In which case, I'm not taking my chances. I'm going all in with both armies. Ah, uh, Corinta made it, yay. Things are looking dicey, but I've spent far too long learning how to pronounce Shupi Luliuma to give up on him now. Karunta approaches from the east, while we attack from the west. We'll position our siege towers adjacent to the wall's entrances, allowing for a swift exit down and into the settlement. Using our charge ability will inspire our chariots to break through the enemy lines. As everyone makes their way in, I'll bring my walled units down and into the settlement. 
The walls are a death trap right now. Perunta's garrison is losing morale, but the man himself approaches through the city. Shubi and his bodyguards will head around the south side to head a mission to capture the central point, while our reinforcing army take out the remaining garrison at the walls. Our forces move further into the city, though it looks like Karunta has decided to avoid Shippy and heads for our reinforcing army. Fair enough. Now that we have the central point, Shupi Luliuma will come after Corinda. Or he would, if Corinda had not surrendered in fear of the approaching king. He knows what to expect. Corinda is defeated. Serves him right for stealing the name of one of our beloved deities. He's out of action for a few turns. And with that, we've reached 300 legitimacy. Let's head into our royal powers window, and let's unlock tier 2 of forced annexation. Hmm. I've had a change of heart. As High King of Hattie, I should be focusing on defending my lands and making my people happy. This invasion stuff is out of character for me, Make and Corinta is desperate for a peace treaty. Not to mention he's still got five settlements, so even if we wanted to annex him, we'd have to take out another three. I think I'll accept his offer, and look at that, he's also happy to become our vassal. This will be a perfect buffer to deal with invasions from the south. Since we're no longer upgrading our tier of forced annexation, we can upgrade our court presence and really take over the courts. We now have a slot for tier one, which we can use on, I think I'll go with raise resources to further help us through the collapse. With increased resources, we can raise another army and put that general into a court position. With special recruitment, we can instantly raise an army just in time to deal with these new pesky invaders. We've gone full loop. I think next I'll try and reach 400 legitimacy. It'll probably take me to about turn 100. I wonder what happens after turn 100. Yeah, I'll probably make some new friends. If I want to into a period of Sometimes I question the lessons I was taught as a child. The world grows dark, and our enemies stronger. Can Hattie survive when others throw down their morals so easily? I only hope, pray, that our gods can see my devotion to our people and spare us in the coming wars.